I'm often in a hurry to get to the end product of something I'm working on. But building a boat like this is just as much about the journey of learning a craft with friends as it's about sailing when the boat's complete. To be honest, I'm going to need a long journey as there's very little of this process that I'm currently good at. While I'm pretty good at using a hammer and can basically cut a straight line with a saw, I'm pretty terrible when it comes to using a hand plane, which is one of these, and I can't even remember what Greg said this is called. Truthfully, I'm excited that I don't know any of these things. I'm getting a chance to learn something new and turn that knowledge into something beautiful. Friendship, knowledge, and purpose. Things that I've been missing for the last couple of years. Things that I don't want to do without again. I've built a boat pretty much by myself. That wasn't anywhere near as fun as the second boat I built where there were four guys working on it, just like this one. And um, that was a blast. I, I never had so much fun. If you're gonna build a boat, I'd recommend get a buddy or your kids. Oh, I wish I would have built a boat with my kid. I really wish I would have done that. Uh, looking back, you know. As a kid, I had plastic toy boats to play with or made boats out of sticks to float in a nearby stream. But I didn't understand why a boat stayed on top of the water or what made them easier or harder to steer. I became obsessed later in life when I began to understand the basics of displacement or the way that the wind interacted with the sail. For anyone who's like me and just beginning to understand boats, here are some of the basics. When a boat enters the water, there is an ocean worth of water pushing back against it. And if the boat is balanced so that it doesn't tip over and let water into it, then no matter how large the boat is, it will stay on the surface. This is displacement. In building a boat, the boat must be shaped in a way that displaces or moves water equal to its weight. From a canoe to the largest cargo ship, they all share this same principle. How that looks in our boat is the shape that you see in the molds, which are currently upside down. This is the bottom of the boat and along the bottom is the keel. The keel is important both to the balance of the boat and the steering. Our boat has a ballast keel, which gives the boat weighted stability. And it has a centerboard keel, which can be lowered below the bottom of the boat to keep the boat from being pushed sideways in the wind. It also means the keel can be raised as needed for the boat to be removed from the water and put onto a trailer. Running through the boat from side to side are the ribs or frames, which the sides of the boat or the planking will be attached. The planking runs from the front or bow of the ship to the back or stern where it meets the transom. The transom gives strength and stability to the back of the boat. After each of those elements are completed, the boat is turned right side up and the rest of the boat can be built. The biggest mistake would be to get the basic shape wrong. And by basic shape, I mean uh, the molds have to be built correctly to the curves and sizes that the plans give you. Uh, the transom has to be in the right orientation, height-wise. A lot of boat building is, it has to look right. It might not actually be exactly what it says on the plan, but, it, but it, if it looks right, it is right. You know, it's all curved. Everything's curved. And so you, you spend a lot of time stepping back saying, does that look good? Yeah, that looks, that looks okay. This is a complicated boat. I would not recommend it for the first boat someone builds. Uh, there are simpler boats to build. You know, you can take your time, take it step by step. Uh, if you're uncertain about the part you're about to make out of expensive Purple Heart or, you know, White Oak, make it out of plywood first. Learn how to make the piece and then make it. You know, make sure it fits. Make sure it's everything you want. You'll learn a lot just by making it out of plywood. When in doubt, make it on something you don't care about. This is going to be a steam box. The boat's ribs have to be bent around molds to give them their shape. They're made out of oak. And so in order to 
make them so they'll bend, they have to be steamed. And what steam does is heats up the natural water content of the wood and makes it pliable so that it'll bend. White oak has a number of things that make it bend really well. Uh, it's a fairly fast-growing, dense hardwood. It's durable. It's incredibly strong. And it has uh, a cellular structure that allows it to absorb heat, in this case, steam. It's in an enclosed box uh, with a steam boiler feeding the steam into it with a vent to make sure that the box doesn't explode. That will literally heat up the lignin, which is the glue that holds the fibers of a piece of wood together. And by heating up and plasticizing that lignin, it allows this wood to bend uh, to fairly extreme shapes. And so if we do this right, we'll be able to bend that white oak around these molds, clamp it in place, let it cool, and it will stay in the shape of that mold. There it is. Excellent. We're using a block plane, and we are taking the sharp edge off of this stick before we steam it. When you bend it, the sharp edges could, you know, fracture off. That's it. It's the ideal temperature for this thing to be at. As hot as it'll go. Well, water boils at 212, so you want to keep it like well over 200 degrees. So there's three levels to this box. The bottom where you never put anything because then it's just laying on the bottom against the wood. Steam can't circulate freely around it. The first rack, you can load that one up. And when we are doing more frames in one day, we'll do that. This top rack, obviously, it's going to have the highest temperature and the best volume of steam, we can fit all four on that top rack and we're gonna do that. With white oak from a tree that was standing six to eight weeks ago in a field in Wisconsin, the moisture content of the wood is quite high, which is what you want. When you're bending, steam bending any wood, you want an air dried piece of wood, you want it to have straight grain, and you don't want the moisture content to be too low. So wood that's been dried in a kiln, all that, not not an ideal choice. We're gonna take these out one at a time, wrap them around these molds and clamp them in place. I'm gonna allow ourselves 10 minutes to do each one. We're gonna shoot for four today. And I think that'll be plenty. This one's going out first? Yeah. So you want to push on that, push it this way. This way. Yep. Is that right? Yep. All right. Basically pulling it off of the mold. OK, now back on. And off the mold and back on. OK. And that gives That's it. That's that. That makes it happen. We're trying to make it relax. Oh, I see. You want it to relax. A little bit more. OK. Okay. All right, so that one's done. Let's see what happens when I insure it. All right. Uh, well done, no matter where all the other things are. This was a successful bend. The thing went in, no problem. We got a minute 52, so let's glove up. So make sure you don't put your face into the steam the box steam. when you open it. What happens you, when you put your face in the steam box? You actually burn the shit out of your forehead. <laughs> and I've already done that once today. Is it bright red? Yeah, there's a hairline now yeah. there that wasn't there before. Right, exactly.
ですな。I don't think that was supposed to happen. No, it's not. So <laughs> let's go ahead and try to do both of these right yeah, now. Yeah, let's just do them. Gloves. We don't have to get too panicky because they're, 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 they're good and hot. Keep this closed. We're going to start right there. All right. And we're shorting one by 10 minutes. Got it. Hey, here we go. Wedge. Drive it home. Hit it like you got a pair. How's that? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not doing it till you tell me. Nice and easy. Here we go. Last but not least. Wedgie. 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 Uh, uh, you guys have got the gloves, so you guys go ahead. OK. So position over there. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Okay, here we go. Here it's we go. Hot. Let's see what we, we got, got Maxwell's okay, go. tarnished silver hammer. Need you, man. Go on. Get in there. Down to now. Seems like it's stiff. Down from there. Come over. Okay. Again. Okay. This one. Things went great until the pot melted. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those have you melted already, guys? Is this this is a first for me? Well, okay. The thing now. I'm done. I'm going home. No, you're not. Yep. You have to put the dogs in. So, and at some point we got to figure out what happened there after that cools off. <laughs> well, it melted. But that looks like aluminum. It is. We ran out of water, okay, and it melted the pot. So lesson learned: if you're going to use aluminum, be sure to keep water in the pot. I took the plug out to put water in, and I went, wait a minute, I can see the asphalt in there. Yeah, we never did that. It's fine. Oh, shit. oh my god, look at that. Yep. Oh. Oh, man. So I hope we didn't completely toast the Move this up and out of the way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Do you, you got your hammer? We could maybe break that shit out of there so yeah. that we don't lose the burner. Okay. Well, we got everything in. Uh, do you have a screwdriver handy? No. Okay. I need to get one. Yeah. It's melted onto the burner. It is not something I anticipated. Isn't aluminum like super dangerous? Yeah, it is. I think it's, it is. I think it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, obviously, we got to rethink the burner yeah. and a pot. This was too small. Yeah. We weren't steaming very long. Yeah. Uh, it was probably like a two or three gallon pot. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get the big, big, big honking pot. Yeah. And then we can go to a three quarter inch, I'm sorry, a one inch inside diameter hose that flange and then we need a new flange yeah and we'll 
plug those holes so we don't have steam pouring out. You know, we did get four frames successfully steamed, not a crack, not a splinter coming off of them. So that's a success. They all I got it. So fine. I'm going to text the these to uh, water. We ran out of water. We had 10 minutes left to go. To Dave, who turns out lent us fast. this stuff. Probably a just Yeah, no, steam it Oops. I'm quite sure this will not be the only mistake we'll make in the process of building this wooden boat. And while we may end up breaking a few frames or getting some of the flooring wrong, the greatest mistake that I can see would be not building this boat at all. <laughs>